Good morning, everybody. It's April 1st, and I'm still psyched about this weekend, but I'm not as psyched as Juan Soto was during his post-game press conference on Sunday. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me, Amanda. I'm the best ever. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Hey, what's up, Derek? This is Mark in Virginia. This is my third year joining fellow Yankee fans on the post-game hangout sessions. I've got an observation to share with everybody. Over these first four games, not once, not from a player or coach, not once have we heard the word analytics. Maybe for once, Upper Brass is letting Boone manage and the players play. Go Yanks. Thanks for the call, Mark. Analytics are simply data points, math. Just because we're not hearing about it doesn't mean the Yankees aren't using it. Now, the Yankees have hired a new liaison to filter the analytics that are coming from the front office into the clubhouse. So maybe it's not as prevalent as it has been in recent years. Maybe it's not the first thing on everybody's mind. But it does seem like they're playing good team baseball. Ever since they were down 4 nothing in Game 1 to the Astros, it seems like a, a switch flipped, and they just started playing really good baseball. They're drawing walks. They're making the plays on defense. They're getting timely hits. They're hitting with runners in scoring position. They're putting constant pressure on the opposition. And if that continues, don't worry about the analytics. The Yankees will be fine. Thank you for the call. Hey, this is Spencer. I, I just want to say that the, the level of uh... – Swag, big dig energy, whatever you want to call it, has just so much up this year. And you got to credit for Dugo, you got credit Juan Soto, just just the level, the level of confidence, the level of uh, just swagger that these gentlemen have coming into the field. It's it's incredible, and I think it just translates to a great ball club and a great clubhouse that uh, we're seeing the results of. I do love the energy on this year's team. I think Verdugo is going to be an underrated part of this team. I know he didn't have the greatest weekend in left, but he made a catch when it counted to end the series. I thought he had some good at bats. I think the bullpen has been terrific. You just saw Birdie in the highlights. I think that Clay Holmes will get it together. Every game isn't going to be a complete heart attack. Uh, He's just getting into rhythm. He pitched in three out of the four games. Juan Soto obviously brings that confident swagger. Now, the Yankees have had swagger in years past. They just weren't any good. Luke Voigt had a ton of swagger. He just couldn't hit a slider. But uh, I do think that the Yankees right now are playing with more confidence than we've seen since the first half of the 2022 season when they started off like 60 and 39 or whatever it was. This team is off to a great start. But it's going to be a nice test for them as they play the reigning National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks for the next three games, and then they come home to take the Blue Jays on. I'm going to make this quick. Had two things I see could be uh, minor storylines emerging anyway until uh, Cole comes back and DJ comes back. But until then, uh, what do you think about the uh, Clark schmidt Luis heel battle? Uh, excited to see what Heel can do. And the second is, uh, I think Birdie's going to be getting a lot more reps. He showed he was obviously a, a very, very well suited defensively over at third. And uh guy can make contact as well. So first of all, yes, very excited to see Luis Heel tonight in his season debut. Hasn't pitched in a couple of years because of that Tommy John surgery. And he looked good this spring. The fastball is still overpowering. Now, Birdie, we're going to have to be careful as as to how we refer to Birdie because we've got John Birdie and we've got Nick Birdie. They sound exactly the same. They're spelled a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, John Birdie over at third with the game-saving play, I don't think that's gotten enough attention. That saved a game. Going down the line like that to, to steal an extra base hit from Altuve, that straight up saved the game. So the Yankees have made big plays when they needed to. And uh, I feel really good about Nick Birdie out of the bullpen as well. His stuff is phenomenal. Just a flamethrower. Hey, this is Alex, and I just want to say this team's starting rotation is really overlooked. I think it's really, really solid. I think it's top, maybe top 
13 or taken in the league without their ace. It's, I know it's overlooked, and but I think it's just because the offense is so good, people expect better of rotation. Well, top 13 in the American League isn't saying much. You're basically saying they're a bottom two team in the, in the American League. But I, I do think that there are some underrated guys in this rotation. I think Nestor Cortez, if healthy, is very solid. Two years ago, he had a 2.44 ERA. I don't know if he's going to be healthy. I don't know if he's going to be that good. But I could see him being very solid. He settled down after the tough start the other day. Look, Rodone's stuff looked better. The fastball had a little bit of extra zip. How's he going to bounce back? How is the back going to hold up? Those are the questions that I want to see answered. And Luis Hill, we haven't seen him pitch yet. But tonight, we're going to get a look at it, and we're going to find out if he can handle Major League hitters still. Hi, Derek. My name is Joe from New Jersey. Last time I left the voicemail last season, I was criticizing Aaron Boone, but now I just really want to take the time just to give the man credit and celebrate the amazing, much-needed win against the Astros. Series sweep. Got to love it. Got to love to have a little revenge. And just want to give Aaron Boone a lot of credit. I honestly think he's managing so much better now. The lineup is more consistent. Of course, we have a better roster, more left-handed at bats, like left-handed batters. And I'm just so overall impressed with just that the lineup is a lot more consistent and our regulars are actually playing daily instead of, like, literally taking off, like, every other day. And honestly, knock on wood, just hope this keeps up. It does seem like the Yankees have made more of an effort to get guys who post. You know, Juan Soto played every game last season. Alex Verdugo plays a ton of games. Anthony Volpe missed a day yesterday, but he played in over 150 games last year. Now, Judge and Stanton still going to get some time off. Rizzo probably going to get some time off. But I agree with you. So far, Aaron Boone has pushed the right buttons, especially with the bullpen and the lineup. Seems to be doing really well. I want to give some credit to James Rousen, their uh, new hitting coach. We haven't seen much of him or heard much about his philosophy, but right now the team is having much better at bats. You see Volpe take a really close pitch right there. You see guys using the whole field and working the count. It's been a pleasure to watch so far this season. Hey, Derek. It's Matthew from Long Beach. Love watching Soto just absolutely bully Astro pitchers, especially the last at bat against France. My take is I think John Birdie should be the third baseman, even when DJ gets back. I know Oswaldo's hitting well, but when that eventually cools off, his speed is just a different factor for us, and we should stick with Birdie. Interesting take, and not one that I have seen yet because Oswaldo has gotten off to such a great start. But you're right, he's probably going to cool off at some point. And I could see, honestly, a platoon situation until DJ gets back, where you got John Birdie in there against lefties and you got Oswaldo Cabrera in there against righties. We know that Cabrera is hitting lefty against some lefties. We saw him hit lefty against Hayter, but I don't expect that to be the norm. And it's honestly not ideal, but I like your solution. I like your solution. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I agree with you that anybody on the planet, any normal person on the planet, has moods during the winter that correlate exactly with how the Yankees did the previous season, even day by day, my mood is affected that way. Secondly, a suggestion or at least um, a request, uh, when you play sound effects and sudden bursts of music, if you would please uh, consider lowering the volume by quite a lot. You know, when you're about to punch the button with a sound effect or a burst of music, you know it's coming, but uh, we don't. And it's a real, real... Um, it's a shock. It's a surprise. And it's uh, too loud anyway compared to the sound of your voice, even if we had a warning. I hear you, and I take constructive criticism uh, with uh, with a grain of salt. I know that some people love the sounds. I try and get people amped up after the game. So maybe I'll turn it down a, a tick, but I uh, appreciate the call. Ladies and gentlemen, Yankees take on the Diamondbacks tonight and for the next few days, and then they head back to Yankee Stadium Keep those voicemails coming. They seem to be good luck. They seem to keep the Yankees going. So I'll see you next time. All right, everybody. That was all the voicemails that we got last night after the game. Call in after a big Yankees win or big Yankees loss. And we're going to try and do a lot more voicemail episodes like this one throughout the season. And uh, hopefully we'll get that subscriber number up to 40,000. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. 
and I'll see you after the game. Oh, by the way, also subscribe to NYY Recaps on all your favorite podcast platforms. Just in case you're on the road and you can't catch YouTube, you can still listen to the podcast. Ball game over.